By the way, how come these 600 letters were found there, of all places? Well, just remember this. When Ikhnatan finally decided, okay, I got to go back to mommy, to mother, and give up this revolutionary thing, so he moved the palace back to Memphis. You know, moving men, when they pack your stuff and they put it in the vans to take away, sometimes they forget a box. They took the file, they took the archives, the royal archives, the diplomatic correspondence in boxes, and forgot one box. It lay there, was buried, it was found by a peasant woman in 1887. And that is the box that contains these archives. Now, if we had the other boxes, you know, we'd know more. But nevertheless, they reveal a lot about what's going on at the time. It's interesting, too, that many of these scribes, Egyptians are writing Babylonian. Babylonians are writing, of course, in their language. Canaanites are writing Babylonian. A lot of the Canaanite scribes, <laughs> they start sticking in Canaanite words, that is, Hebrew words, instead of Babylonian. And uh, sometimes they'll write a Babylonian word, and then in parentheses they'll give the Canaanite translation, as if to, to tell the scribe there, who may also be a Canaanite. Uh, Bab means Sha'ar. But the problem with Achet Aten is that once the revolution was over, he became, in the eyes of the later Egyptians, that cursed guy. And therefore, that place was also called that cursed place because, you know, the whole religious sensibility was disturbed. <clears throat> now, why do I deny him the rank of prophecy? <laughs> you know, if you want to know what a prophet is like, you read Amos or Jeremiah or one of the others. Amos stands up and he's delivering an impassioned condemnation of Israel, aristocracy and the royal family and the priesthood and all these people who are subjecting the poor to intense suffering. And uh, he, he accuses them. He says, you are just dehumanizing the people and, and you have no right to do that. So the priest approaches him and says, Get out of here, you're disturbing a royal sanctuary. And he turns on the priest and he lets him have it. And he says, you, God is going to punish you in a most horrible way because you deserve it. Then the priest sends a letter to the king saying, you know, I think this Amos is involved in some kind of conspiracy against the government. He's trying to get him killed. You know, the prophet doesn't care. Then we come to the trial of Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah the prophet is accused of being disloyal, subversive, undermining the faith and the strength of the people. He's weakening the hands of the soldiers who are supposed to defend our country and he is weakening them. They put him on trial. That's a beautiful trial. You should read that chapter in Jeremiah. So Jeremiah says, you are a jury, and you're trying me, and you may convict me, and you may kill me. <laughs> he said, but I am saying, God is telling me what to tell you. So if you think I'm going to stop talking, or I will retreat from my position, I cannot do that, because God is speaking through me. So you do what you have to do. And I will do what I have to do, and that is to tell you exactly what is right and what is wrong and what God is saying. The other problem is, if you kill me, the word of God will come out of someone else's mouth. It won't stop. He doesn't yield. He doesn't back down, not for an inch. By the way, he's acquitted at that trial. I mean, the people say, this man is just too much. They acquit him. But don't you think they try to kill him anyway? The other, they try to kill him. Echnatan is not the same type. First of all, we see where gradually his mother talks to him and writes to him and tells him, you know, this is too much. You've gone too far. 
you're antagonizing, you have to compromise. And his wife was saying, we've got to push the revolution forward and it's, you know, the ideal. And you can see that he's ready to compromise and compromise until he finally gives in, he yields. That's a compromiser is not a prophetic type. He might have written to him to the sun, he might have. I don't think he was the leader of the revolution. I think he was the figurehead of the revolution. In any event, he retreats, he goes back to Memphis and he gives up. And then the revolution is over for all practical purposes.